Hey, Money Magnets, I'm your host, Dr. Amanda, and if you're a coach, entrepreneur, or service-based business owner, you're in the right place to learn practical, actionable law of attraction strategies that will help you grow your business more easily. And today, I'm going to talk to you about the four-step business profitability cycle. These four steps are going to help you grow your business more easily in big ways because you're gonna understand where you are in the business profitability cycle. Sometimes when we think we're in a different place than we are in our business, we can get really frustrated because we have unrealistic expectations. And so I wanna outline what it looks like to be in a business profitability cycle so that you can stop guessing and feel more relaxed on the upward spiral growth curve of scaling your business to the level that you desire. And let's start here. Remember in the last episode, number 354, where I talked about the four zones of business growth to get to your zone of manifestation, I said that in every step of your business, you want to be doing three things. These are your three top priorities for every zone that you're in of business growth. Number one, you want to be doing daily personal growth, which I want you to have a law of attraction focus because when you understand how to apply the law of attraction, everything in life and business gets so much easier. Your magnetism increases. You feel like you're the deliberate creator of your reality. You can set goals and manifest them easily. Business grows with ease and joy and flow and fun. So you've got to be focused on daily personal growth. I said number two, the thing that you want to consistently be focusing on is lead gen. Now, obviously, when you're in the beginning stages of your business, you might be doing this all by yourself. At some point, you're going to delegate this away if you choose to. Some people love lead gen. If you love it, keep doing it. If at some point when you're in the zone two and three, you start to go, okay, I know my brand and I could delegate this well and not waste money delegating it, then delegate lead gen. Yet it is something that you must be focusing on because if your leads dry up, your business dries up. And then the third thing was the four-step business profitability growth cycle. And I said in that episode that I would break it down in this episode so that you understand what I'm talking about more clearly. So the four-step business profitability growth cycle is to create, test, refine, scale. Create, test, refine, scale. I want you to get out a piece of paper, if you can right now, maybe you're driving, don't do it then, and write this down. Just write at the top, business profitability growth cycle, or business profitability cycle, and then write number one, two, three, four. Create, test, refine, scale. I want you to keep reminding yourself of this because as I walk through what this means, you're gonna understand, oh, where am I in this process and what kind of mindset do I need to have in order to feel good as I grow my business through the zones, getting to zone four, my zone of manifestation, which is where all the awesomeness happens. So this week's episode and last week's tie together really well. So if you have not yet listened to episode 350, you're definitely going to want to do that first. It'll make more sense to you. So go back and listen to episode 354 first if you haven't yet, and then come back and listen from this point in this episode. So quick recap, the four zones of business growth are number one, the manic imposter zone, two, overwork and get underpaid, three, value yourself more, and four, zone of manifestation. So as you move through these four zones, you're going to be applying this business profitability growth cycle. So in the cycle, you are going to be creating, testing, refining, and scaling. And I want you to think about this as a mindset and framework. So it's a specific mindset you're having. Okay, I'm going through create, test, refine, scale. And then that way it's a framework for you to know the roadmap to scaling your business. And the key here is that what you're doing by understanding this is you're diagnosing which part of the business profitability cycle you're in so you have matched expectations. I'm going to say that again because it's really, really important. You're diagnosing which part of the business profitability cycle you're in so that you have matched expectations. And what I mean by this is that when you know where you are, it makes more sense to you and it feels more comfortable because you're not wishing it was something else. It's kind of like when you go to the doctor and you've been having this issue and the doctor tells you or diagnoses what's wrong and you're like, oh, that's why I've been feeling this way. And all these light bulbs go off and you start to overlay your history and think, that's why I experienced this and this and this and this and this. Same exact thing we're doing here, where when you know, am I in the create 
part of my business? Am I in the test part of my business? Am I in the refine? Am I in the scale? When you pay attention to which part you're in on the business profitability cycle, it feels a lot easier because you're not resisting what is. And remember, resistance is the number one reason that you don't manifest what you want because you're creating blocked flow. So if you can look at your business today and think, which stage am I in right now? Am I in zone one, two, three, or four? And in that zone, am I creating, testing, refining, or scaling? because you're going to be doing a little bit of this in every single zone. Typically, when you're in zone one, the manic imposter zone, you're going to be in the huge creation zone. You're creating, 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 and you're putting stuff out there to test it. That's zone one and two, right? You're doing a lot of work. You're probably getting underpaid because you're doing so much creation and you're not sure what works. So there's a lot of discovery that happens in zone one and zone two in that creation mode. Now, people get really stuck in zone one and two when they don't test strategically because then you can't refine what is and isn't working, which means you're never going to be able to scale. And so when you're in the manic imposter zone and the overwork and get underpaid zone and you're creating a lot, you want to be paying attention to testing. So create. Let's let's start here. Create. When you're in the create zone, you are designing signature offers. You're deciding what you're good at doing. You're starting to think about your brand. You're talking to people. You're putting posts out there. Maybe you're starting a podcast or a YouTube channel or a blog. You are writing a newsletter. You are going to networking events. You're doing a whole bunch of creation mode activities. And you are discovering how to talk about your business. You're discovering how to sell. You're discovering what you enjoy and who you work with the best. And, you know, dependent on your type of business model, this is still going to apply no matter what type of business model you have. Obviously, I'm talking from a coaching perspective because I have a coaching business, but you could have a real estate sales business. You could be a chiropractor. You could have a brick and mortar. This will apply to any type of business. And so in that create zone, a lot of times it's because you're in that very first stage of business and you are creating in order to find out what works. Now in the create zone, you want to have fun and be strategic. So that inspiration is high and in order to drop the imposter syndrome that happens in these initial zones, you want to be strategic because it's gonna help you move to testing and refining and scaling more quickly. So creation is gonna be fun throughout your whole business. You're probably never gonna stop creating. I think a lot of the reason why entrepreneurs become entrepreneurs is because they have a lot of creativity and they love to be creators, right? We hear that all the time, creative entrepreneurs, you're a creator, being an influencer is a version of creation, building a business from the ground up, you are creating a business, you're making money out of nothing. You are creating and generating money out of thin air. I like to think of you as an ATM machine where you are putting yourself out there and getting money pumped out in return. Such a cool concept, right? You are creating win-wins, you're exchanging value through your creations, and you're getting paid for it. To get strategic, to get to zone four more easily, you want to start to test. So in that creation, have fun, keep going for it. This is gonna keep you inspired. Yet, don't burn yourself out over creating and never assessing whether or not your creations are working to get where you want to go. That's where testing comes in. So when you start to test, what it means is that you are doing market validation. You are looking at your KPIs, your key performance indicators, you're tracking, you are being strategic, and you're being somewhat patient in this part. And this is where, when you start to value yourself more, this is where you start to delegate what you've learned in zones one and two, because you go, oh my God, I am not willing to work this hard. And you start to innately have the desire to be more strategic. This is a place where a lot of people give up on business or they get strategic. So get strategic, don't give up. Giving up would look like I'm tired of working this hard. I'm tired of creating so much and no one's buying it. Or, you know, I've just put my heart and soul and money and energy and time into it and it's not working. And this is because you haven't slowed down enough to be strategic. You haven't tested and refined so that you can scale. You've just been in the creation mode. Creation is awesome, but creation without direction will burn you out. I know because I've been there many times in my business and the more strategic I've gotten, the better and better things feel because I'm getting 
predictable results from building a business and we all want predictable results. So keep creating and having fun with it because this is your generative force and this is probably what inspires you in big ways. If you don't apply strategy to it by testing and refining, you will never be able to scale to the level you desire. So again, create, test, refine, scale, create, test, refine, scale. So in the testing again, like I said, I want you to know that you are building a business in a constant process of testing. KPIs are critical. This means if you're putting out a post, are you measuring the results of the post that you're putting on social media? If you are deciding to test out ads, are you measuring the ads? Or are you just hoping that something awesome happens and the post goes viral? You can't build a business based on hope and thinking that something's gonna go viral. That's not a strategy. It might happen, awesome if it does, that would be great. You can't count on that. You want to be able to have predictable actions that lead to money in the bank in a predictable way so you can scale your business. So testing requires tracking, it requires you being strategic, it requires you doing market validation, it requires you being patient. Because if you don't get those quick win results, you can give up and The reason that that's happening is because you're not seeing the reality of testing. When you put out an ad, you must track the numbers. So I'm playing with ads right now and I am learning from somebody that's really helpful because she talks about it's all about the math. Pay attention to the math. And I have yet to meet a seven or eight or nine figure entrepreneur who doesn't test, 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 and they all talk about the numbers. So one drawback I see for heart-centered type coaches is they're not very business mindset based sometimes and they tend to want to help the world and there's like yes I just want to help people I love what I do as a coach and they forget that a huge part of success in your business is about business building a business which means you must be strategic which means you must track and you must pay attention to what's working and what's not working in order to scale to the next level and this does require some patience I like to say patience because typically what I see entrepreneurs do is they come in and they go it's going to be awesome. Everything's going to be up. I'm going to make so much money. I see other entrepreneurs out there doing it and it's going to happen so fast. And they forget to look at the track record of the entrepreneurs they're comparing themselves to. They forget to look at all of the perceived failures. And when I say perceived, they didn't fail because they kept going. So that's just a perception. They didn't fail because here they are to be compared to. So if you're looking at someone who's way ahead of you in business and you're thinking they just got there magically overnight and it happened immediately, then you have a misperception. Look back at their decades probably of testing. Create, test, refine, scale. They did this exact process and they created, tested, refined, scaled. And it looks messy sometimes. Business is not a straight line growth curve. It's a spiral growth curve where you have you know, failures that teach you and you learn from them. So you never really fail. You just learn from the mistakes. You keep going and you get better and better over time. You create, test, refine, scale. So just pay attention to your mindset around this. Where am I? Am I in the create and having fun? Am I willing to start testing so that I can refine and scale to the next level? Or am I stuck in just creation, creation, creation and hoping that it'll work? If that's where you're stuck, what it means is that you need to start testing. You need to start getting strategic. If you're in the test spot, Pay attention to the numbers. Get help if you need it. Get outside perspectives. And most importantly, I'd say in the test process, be patient, like I'm saying, because if you give up too soon, you're not going to know what works and what doesn't work. That way, when you figure out, oh, this one post gets the most clicks, or this one networking event that I go to gets the most consults on the calendar, or, oh, this joint venture partnership brought me the most money I've ever made, perhaps I should pursue more joint venture partnerships. You can only know those things when you test and you pay attention to the test so that you can refine. And all refining means is that you're going to make adjustments according to the test outcomes. So the testing is a huge part of your business. You can test by first doing market validation where you ask people what they want instead of just creating something you think they want. This is one of the first steps that I always teach people on the business growth roadmap to six figures is that you've got to do market validation. A lot of times, 
We create things without testing and then we wonder why they didn't work. So market validation is a process of having an idea that you test before you actually create anything tangible so that you don't waste time, money, and energy. So market validation is a great way to test an idea, a creation in your mind, without creating a tangible something that wastes your time, energy, and money. So if you have a great idea right now, test it test it, test it, test it by doing market validation. And all that means is that you go ask the people that you know, let's say you have a big following already and you have an idea for a new product, program, or service, go ask them, is this something you want? Does this way that I'm thinking of structuring it, would you buy in? And the best form of market validation is a deposit. So then you know you have buy-in and don't create things in a tangible way until you market validate, which is testing. Through the testing and asking questions, you're refining and making a product program or service that works really well for your people. Now you have certainty that they'll buy it. Now you can scale. So then scale just means when it's working, that's where to focus your time, energy, and money to scale to the level you desire. And you know, you might do this many times in your business. Let's say I like to teach people before they're six figures. So if you're pre six figures to focus on one product program or service, because you've got to get brand identity so that you can get to zone four. When you get to zone four and you don't have scattered brand identity anymore, you're really clear. You're starting to value yourself more. You're starting to have people see you as that expert in your area of expertise and you get to zone four and things are humming and flowing, now you can add services and products and programs. And so you're going to then again go through the create, test, refine, scale process. And this is something you're just going to keep doing as you go up that spiral growth curve to the highest potential of yourself, which I don't really think you ever meet because you're constantly growing and learning. And so it's just you expanding and feeling good in the process because you're not thinking, I should be in the scaling part of the business profitability cycle, but really you're in the create part. So identify today, am I in the creation? If I'm in the creation part of my business, am I out creating myself, feeling overworked and getting underpaid because I'm not testing? Or are my creations leading to money in the bank that feels good? And how could I test parts of what's working so that I can refine it and scale it? If you're stuck in create, start testing, start refining, then you can scale. If you're in the scale part and your business is flowing and growing, awesome. Ride that wave until you decide, I want to create something new, an addition. Don't remember, don't sabotage here where you blow it all up because you're bored as a creator. Think about ways you could sell your business that would help you make money or make tweaks to creating something that's going to keep you flowing in that creation mode without wiping out everything that you've worked for up until this point, everything that you've built up until this point. And so, you know, I always like to give you these mindset perspectives so that you can see where you are and understand bottlenecks based on looking at information in your business. Remember, my inner power formula is to recognize, reframe, repeat, to reprogram. Now, this is very much about recognition of which part of the business profitability cycle you're in, which zone you're in of business growth. So you're recognizing so that you can make strategic reframes so that then you can repeat those and then get the level of desired success. Reprogramming yourself for success is just all about a process process of getting better and better each and every day. It's not typically a huge leap from, I feel like hell, I don't know what I'm doing, I feel like an imposter, my life is falling apart, I have no money in the bank, to all of a sudden, in a month, you are making millions of dollars in your business and you feel amazing. That's so unrealistic, right? And sometimes we have mismatched expectations. I can always tell when I meet with someone what zone they're in by what they say their goals are. It's often a newbie will say, you know, they're not even making any money yet in their business and they're like, I want to make a million dollars this year. And I'm like, huh, awesome that you're thinking so big. And that's somewhat of a mismatched expectation because you have no idea what you're doing yet. And there is so much that you're going to go through as a business owner. I like to say that it's a spiritual growth path to be a business owner because you're going to bring up all 
all the shadow parts of yourself and you're going to learn so much. And so it's, there's nothing wrong with having that huge vision and have, wanting a million dollar business. Awesome. A hundred percent possible. The timeline is going to vary by person based on your previous history of business, your network, how much specific type of business information you have, your mindset, your limiting beliefs, like those things are all going to play into how quickly you can get to your goal. And I truly believe it's 100% possible for each and every one of us to manifest our goals. The timeline is going to look different for each and every person based on all of those things that I just shared. And so when I'm sharing with you here about the zone of manifestation business growth map, roadmap, and going through the zones, just detect where you're at. Don't beat yourself up. None of this is about beating yourself up. It's about determining where am I on the roadmap and what are the strategic steps I need to take to get to the next zone. And just remember to keep applying the create, test, refine, scale framework so that you can know where you are and then get strategic. Anytime you have a bottleneck, it's really easy to go back and just go, well, where am I? If I feel like I'm not scaling, well, look, back to? Am I creating things that work? Did I take time to test them? Am I refining them so that I can scale? So it's really easy to know, well, crap, if I'm not scaling in a happy way that feels aligned for me, I must be stuck in one of these preceding steps. So is it in the creation? Is it in the testing? Is it in the refining? That's how you know where you're at. And that's where you know to focus your time, money, and energy if you're feeling stuck, not getting to that scaling, not getting to a zone of manifestation-based business where things are flowing and feeling easy. So that's how you use this framework that I'm sharing with you today, the four-step business profitability cycle. Again, definitely go back and listen to the last episode. And thank you so much for being here. Remember, if you are looking for help to build your business, my law of attraction for business dot school is a killer program. Each and every Monday we meet for coaching. You get weekly help and support, daily law of attraction lessons. There's a backlog of lessons. There's a course vault. And you can enter into this for free through a trial to see if it's a good fit. Law of attraction for business dot school. If you have not checked it out and you're not there yet, I think you might be crazy. (laughs) Really, I love you. I'm sending you tons of love. And Don't make it harder on yourself than it needs to be. I've got answers for you. I've got solutions for you. I've helped lots of people scale businesses. I'm a genius at helping people see what they don't see and giving them solutions and strategies to take it to the next level, whether it's limited thinking in your mindset or it's a specific business stuck point or bottleneck that you have. I can help you see that. And so can the community that we've built. So it's a podcast community that hangs out together based on the law of attraction for business and you get coaching and lessons and all kinds of awesomeness. So be sure to check it out. Law of attraction for business.school. Until next week, I am sending you giant, 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 giant hugs and money magnet high fives.